your bees are ordered. You guys should have your bees in the mail or have a pickup location or something. And before you even get your package of bees, before you think about that, you gotta do two things. Your hive setup, how it's kind of structured, and your hive stand. Those are two really important things that set you up for some success. If you want a great book on your Langstroth hive, Lorenzo Langstroth was the one who invented the Langstroth hive, and this book is really, really awesome. So your Langstroth 10 frame hive, great beginner hive, this is what I'm teaching on this year, should come with foundation. And it's pre-printed in these hexagonal shapes to give the bees a little bit of a roadmap as to where to build their, their comb. There's a lot of things you can use the comb for, to store honey, to store pollen, but also for your brood, for your baby bees. Now you can see in this frame, this is an old frame where brood was being laid. And if you look up close, these brood cells are much bigger than the pre-stamped cell that is on this beeswax foundation. So if you're having all of your frames here with this beeswax foundation, the cells are gonna be really small. And what happens is that you don't produce healthy bees because they're crammed into these cells that are too small. So I like to give my bees the freedom to make a little bit bigger cell. So how do you get it to organize itself so nicely in a, in a frame like this? What I do is I have my 10 frames here and I take every other frame and I just pop out the foundation. So you have a frame with foundation, you put it in there, the bees are gonna build some nice orderly uh, wax on there and then you put this one right next to it. Then the one right next to that has foundation. So it's like you pop out every other one. Now the ones that have foundation are gonna keep the beeswax in line and in an order. And the ones that don't, they start building comb off of that, just the top bar. And you have this beautiful beeswax that is just pure and beeswax all the way through. This is really great for the brood box because you have healthier bees because those cells are gonna be a little bit bigger. The, the bees can make their own size of cell. But this is also fun to do in your honey box, your honey super, because when you go to harvest honey, you don't have to deal with foundation. And if you want, you could just straight cut out the comb and have chunks of beeswax and comb, but that's for another day. So I take these and I organize them, foundation, foundationless, foundation, foundationless. And that way it keeps things in order. If, if by some chance, I go a little bit crazy and I have two frames that don't have foundation and I put them next to each other, what's gonna happen? The bees aren't gonna use this as a guide. They need a frame next to them that has that foundation that keeps everything straight. If you give them space, they will build beeswax and it will be crazy. So if you put two next to each other that don't have foundation, they'll build like an S pattern with the beeswax and you won't be able to individually separate these ever again. So you wanna make sure you're doing it every other one. This will help you in your brood nest. Now you'll notice when you put your 10 frames in your hive, there's gonna be a little bit of extra room. If you slide them all over, you have about this much room on either side. You don't wanna evenly space these. You want these tight and in place. New term for the day is bee space. Google it, familiarize yourself with bee space. But what that means is that if you leave a space in your hive bigger than three eighths of an inch, they're gonna build beeswax in it. They're gonna fill it up with honeycomb and it's a mess. But if you leave a space smaller than one fourth, they're gonna fill it up with propolis, which also can be a mess. The Langstroth hive is really great because on all of the frames they have spacers. So it keeps it organized if you keep everything really snug. So leave that space at the end. And this is a great space when you come and check the hive, you can kind of go through the hive frame by frame like a filing cabinet and you can keep everything organized. That's your little trick for setting up your hive before you get your bees is every other frame pop out your foundation and make sure always that your frames are snug one side to the other. If you start that at the beginning, you're gonna love yourself come the end of the season when this hive becomes such a mess with like honey and beeswax. Keep it organized. Okay, the other thing is your hive stand. For a hive stand, there's lots of different styles that you can use, but let me show you what I have found works really well. I use a basic wood base 
and it just sits on slats of two by fours. And that way, if I wanna use a screen bottom board, I still have that ventilation coming up from underneath the hive. Now, if you're in an area that deals with hive beetles, a lot of times hive beetles, after they've grown to their adult phase, they drop down into the dirt right beneath your hive and that's where they pupate. And if they thrive in the dirt beneath your hive, they'll crawl right back up into your hive. So a lot of times people will pour a slab of cement or put their hive over gravel. And that's a really great idea just to kind of keep the pests out of your hive. Ants on the other hand are such a nightmare and some areas deal with them worse than others. But the thing is with ants, they can use a single blade of grass that's coming up and touching your hive and they can use that as a bridge to get into the hive. So you wanna make sure that the area for your hive is clear, that you have no grass, that nothing's growing up and touching it, that like using gravel or a cement pad would help with that. But people get really creative. This hive, they're doing like a five gallon bucket that they fill with water and the ants can't crawl across the water and so they don't crawl up to the hive. I feel like it's really unstable and unbalanced and in a windstorm, it would just knock right over. You have a hive like this where they've tried it with all four legs to put their, their legs in some sort of water barrier for the ants. You can also buy really nice stands that have little water cups and they actually have like a little awning over the cup that you fill the water cup with water and the ants can't crawl up. So people get really creative, but in my area, I don't deal a ton with ants. So when I do, I use a product called Ant Cant, and this provides a really good barrier for the ants that they aren't able to crawl up and I don't have to use a water dish. My ideal uh, stand would be something like this, Simple metal legs, not a big like girthy leg that you have to worry about a lot of insects crawling up and that you could spray with an ant can't. Also, I like that this sits really low. And that's one thing to think about is you want a really low hive stand because you're gonna start putting boxes on top of your hive as the apiary grows. And every box like could potentially weigh 60 to 80 pounds. And when you're dealing with like little scrawny arms like this, lifting those above my head gets to be really complicated. So the lower your hive, the better. It's like, it's easier to manage. So a tall stand like this is just ridiculous. It don't, don't be doing tall stands. A lot of people will use just like straight cinder blocks and wood, but the things you wanna think about are pests in your area. If you're dealing with hive beetles, you want to make sure the ground underneath your hive is something where the beetles can't thrive or if you have lots of ants, thinking about keeping blades of grass and other things from touching the hive and also having a little bit of a barrier for those ants. But you'll learn as you go. You'll learn pretty quick as you go, but it's nice to right off the gate, just have something nice to get the hive off the ground. Okay, so that was just a quick little video. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll be right on top of answering all of them. And the next video I have coming out is how to get your package of bees and put it into your hive. Very exciting process. I've done it a million times. I have some tips and tricks. So make sure you tune in for that. And I'm here all season to teach you about beekeeping. So subscribe and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks guys.